Amazon.com. Okay, A-M-Z-N. I got a request from Luca Lanzoni to cover Amazon. Their quarterlies are in, so it's a good time to take a look at them. Uh, got their Q10. And uh, this is Brian Lewis with MMT Investing and Things Just Changed. So Amazon's Amazon quarterly report was not super exciting. Um, they have slightly less cash and slightly less debt right now. And their cash to debt ratio is not that pretty. It was like 23 uh, cash on hand to about 80 in current liabilities, which is less than a third on their on their cash to current debt uh, ratio, uh, which is not not pretty for most companies. But of course, Amazon is not most companies. Uh, so let's take a look at at what uh, what Amazon is doing here in the crash, because this is an interesting chart, interesting business model. And uh, and they're always doing crazy things. So Luca, uh, of course, always smashes that like button right now to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And also Lenzoni, uh, Lenzonis are the, the little fruit in the Philippines that I ate like every day last year. It's like the best fruit ever. And they just have them there in the Philippines uh, when I was living over there last year. So <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, so Amazon, Amazon, let's just draw the, uh, the S&P here. So the S&P came down and it was an ABC kind of corrective wave down in the S&P. Amazon was resistant to the crash, really resistant. And then we get the one, two, three, four, five kind of wave up and some consolidation kind of down move here. And Amazon is above all time highs, which is super rare. There's not very many companies that are up here right now in this cycle. And so that is a good thing to point out. And then another thing to point out is just the cycle in general. As we're looking at a three month credit contraction cycle, three to four months, it looks like it's gonna come out here into June. And uh, this cycle is dangerous, high volatility, big movements, um, risk of, you know, big movements up, big movements down. So these kind of stable stocks like Amazon aren't stable in this environment. And uh, I'll go over, yeah, I guess I'll go over their business model. I mean, this this huge change in in the whole way that USA is going to be shopping here is is very good for Amazon's uh, logistics business model uh, because even before even before this crisis, we were already seeing uh, shops closing down, malls closing down, and more and more people shopping online. And that was looking to be maybe like a 20 year kind of shift from malls to more online shopping. And it was a good long-term outlook for Amazon. But this uh, this lockdown and this crisis has shifted that from 20 years to like two years. Like now the malls and the stores are closed and they're shutting down right now. And a bunch of them are not gonna reopen. And that trend for, for brick and mortar stores to decrease just got, just got accelerated like tenfold. So, I mean, we're going to see those stores that were going to close in 10 years or 20 years from now, they're going to close now and they're not going to reopen. And if they do reopen, they're going to be trying to do online business and they're going to be huge, hugely restricted online business and they're going to be competing with Amazon. And this is a huge, huge thing for Amazon. And we'll talk about the, I guess the value, like Amazon's expensive. And it's really hard to decide. I mean, their their business model basically is to not make any profit and not pay any taxes and just keep trying to expand. And it's really difficult to look at their financials and their balance sheets and figure out how good their company is or what their real value should be. It's just really difficult. And I guess they're gonna start switching to more of a profit forward model going forward now, but I mean, as a value investment thing, like we're on the top of a bubble here. So, I mean, there's nothing that looks like a good value on earth, like right now, like everything's inverse value, like overpriced. I mean, we just had like a six month run of 
the stock price is way out pricing the earnings of all the companies. And we have tons of companies making no profit with huge debt that are in so much trouble right now. And uh, Amazon, the balance sheet looks like they have a lot of debt and not much profit, but I don't think Amazon's in risk like a lot of these other companies are right now. And uh, if you talk about the credit contraction cycle a little bit more, the um, I just mentioned like the mathematical shape of like a credit, you know, cycle contraction kind of graph a lot. But there's a lot of news coming in to just kind of explain it in more layman's terms, like what this cycle is. Um, and it mostly affects the businesses, like the loans from the bank are less available to the businesses. But we're seeing this across. I mean, we're seeing this across all the sectors like you see in like L.A. Um, they have a lot of those you know, high value mortgages in LA. And now they've canceled all of these jumbo loans. They're called like jumbo real estate loans. So like that entire, and that's a big sector in LA, those uh, high priced houses, like that whole sector in LA now is, you can't get a mortgage for those, for those houses now. And then normal mortgages, I mean, what credit score did you need to get a mortgage over the last few years? Like 400 or something? Like now 700 is no good, like 750, like no good. You can't get, you can't get a loan. You can't, they're just like this week, they're just started changing all the credit card uh, regulations and the, the interest, like the uh, credit scores that you need to get the credit cards and like they're messing with all the interest rates again. So these changes are across not just the businesses, but it's affecting individuals buying houses, companies buying real estate, just credit cards in general are getting tighter. And this is what's happening across the whole world. It's not America. This is a worldwide monetary system. And it's the foreign banks and the foreign businesses that really have a contraction. And they're really, really short on dollars. And people just cannot pay their dollar denominated debt across the world. The American companies are not quite as tight as the international ones right now. Um, but we're seeing this is continuing to accelerate. Like this isn't something that happened and it's over now. This is something that started on Feb 20. And it's accelerating now, and we're starting to see more and more contraction uh, in the news and uh, in the financial data. Like I was just, uh, I was just looking at Hedgeye's kind of reports on how deep the contraction is right now. And you know, like two weeks ago, they were saying like, this is a contraction cycle that we're looking for here, and it's going to be big down growth, but just like a little bit of a, a credit contraction. So like that, what that cycle would look like does not indicate this gash that we had downwards in the S&P. Um, but now uh, their data has been updated over the last few weeks and it's like, whoa, the credit, uh, the negative inflation acceleration and the credit contraction is way, way farther down than what they were projecting. Um, so yeah, I just got some, some cool data about uh, the next several cycles, this cycle is a way, way deeper credit contraction than it looks like it was going to be. And then we're going to get a bigger uh, expansion and reversal to this than it looks like it was going to be. And that would come out here probably, I think it's going to come wow, over here in June. And uh, and really this, uh, this is where I like a lot of these companies like Tesla and GE and Amazon is once we get out of this credit contraction and you get money available again to companies and hopefully the economy in general is turning around and the lockdowns are getting lightened up uh, this is when amazon will shoot off like right now amazon's fighting against the credit contraction cycle and we had this big bounce in the cycle and it, it looks like it's going to turn down now and if you look at the average of the amazon graph it looks like it's way up but over the course of the whole crash it's not it is kind of this angle. And that is about the angle that I would expect Amazon to continue uh, for the rest of the crash. And we'll see what the rest of it looks like, but I would expect Amazon to kind of come in around here, around the end of the crash. And then we'll get that reversal into the next cycle. So for me, like I'm not looking to hold basically anything long, any stocks long. My, I'm 100% cash out of all of my stocks. And I'm playing around with shorts and it's tricky. This cycle is really tricky and it's really dangerous. Um, so I'm just holding cash and uh, looking, you know, for gold and like treasury kind of moves as it moves around a little bit as kind of safe plays. But um, 
but for the most part, most part, I'm just holding cash and looking for shorts. And um, and I don't like Amazon this week, but I sure like them over the next forever. Like there, that I think Amazon's the future of the whole way that logistics and shopping is going to work. And I mean, any small companies that can come up and compete with Amazon are going to be interesting. But right now, they're just dominating that entire industry, and they're going to keep doing that. Um, as far as the valuations, though, it's just man, just their their no their no profit and no tax strategy that they've been doing for a long time is. It's really hard to value this company. Um, yeah, I, I for a long term thing. I mean, I would just say right here is where I like to go long Amazon and. And I don't know. I don't know if we get into a bear market, how much I'll like Amazon on a down downward move in a bear market. They'll probably be beating the bear market pretty significantly, but it still might not be a very good place to hold. So we'll see how we come out of the cycle, see where we are, see kind of the out, out, you know, the forecast. If it looks like we're going to jump to a new trend line or if it looks like we're going to consolidate down into a bear market or what it looks like later. Um, but in any case, bear or bull, this looks good. This looks dangerous and I don't like it this week for sure. And I don't know. I mean, it could be a good, it could be a good long as kind of swing trading thing through this cycle. I mean, this is a big enough up move to be interested, but where did it go from 16 to 24? Yeah, so that's a big enough up move to make this stock interesting. But it kind of, it seems like it kind of broke trend and did a hype thing here. And I don't know if that would repeat on another up leg in the cycle because it did not, it didn't break trend here or here. And if we get, you know, some up legs through the rest of the cycle, I would probably expect it not to do that next time. So I don't think this is, I don't think this is a good like swing trading long through, through this cycle. I mean, I'm looking at the oil tanker companies. Uh, as a really good long, not also not this week, but on these kind of up moves in the market uh, for swing trading in this cycle, you know, like Nordic American tankers. I've done videos on a ton of these tankers. We have the, the crude tanker companies like Nordic American, NAT, um, Euronav, EURN, uh, T, uh, TK tankers, TNKY. Uh, those are crude and uh, DHT, double hole tankers. Those are all the big uh, crude specific companies that have done really well since the beginning of the crash. And now I've been jumping into more of the product tanker fleets because they're starting to soar crude. And those are looking really cool as more of a short term thing. They might get a bigger jump in the short term because because uh, their business model was not storing crude and now it is. And so they could get a really big move soon. Um, but the timing is tricky and it's a dangerous cycle. So uh, like STNG is one of my favorite uh, product tanker fleets. That's Scorpio. And uh, I did Ardmore and uh, TXS and like tops, like top ships, the uh, TOPS. Uh, those are those are all product fleets to take a look at that might be doing some interesting stuff here coming up soon. Or Sakos, uh, the Greek one has a lot of product. That's sort of a mixed fleet. But uh, there's a lot of oil tanker companies that are very interesting right now. And that's really my favorite way for the rest of this cycle and potentially for the next two or three months uh, to go long on oil. And I'm kind of getting off track from Amazon here, but I think I basically covered the, the idea that Amazon looks like a very, very good company long term. And it's just really complicated to trade in this cycle. And it's not a good spot to hold along for me personally. This is not investment advice. Um, so, yeah, I guess, I mean, I mean, Amazon's a big one, so I may as well just like talk about some other ideas that I have going on here. Um, a lot of people are trying to go long on oil right now, and I've seen a lot of interest in like uh, UCO, which is the ultra crude oil, a uh, levered like 2X, that's a, an ETN, and, and the USO, the US oil uh, ETF, and those are both, really basically bad longs 
Uh, as the oil price is going up, those aren't necessarily going to go up with the oil price, even though they're meant to track the oil price. And it's just because those are, they're rolling futures contracts, both of those. Like the USO is a, a rolling futures contract on barrels of crude oil. So like when you buy USO, you're agreeing to buy like a thousand barrels of, um, of crude oil. And when, uh, and then when the prices go up in oil, USO just like doesn't track up with the price because you keep getting this contango situation where you have to get rid of those contracts and they go down and then the, uh, the ETF sells them at a bad price and then buys the new contracts at the high price. And then the next time you get to the end of the contract, they sell it at a bad price and then they buy the next one at a high price. And you just keep losing gains as you roll the futures contracts. When, when the price of oil is going up, that's what Contango does to the futures contracts. Um, and then if you look at the UCO, which is the levered one that's supposed to track oil, and that's like the uh, West Texas oil uh, oil index that's supposed to be tracking. But with that one, with the UCO, it's very similar. It's futures contracts, and you get the same Contango thing as the price is going up. So it doesn't track it up long term. Like those things are only good for like day trading moves. And if you hold them, the volatility gets you and the contango and the future contract rolling gets you. And what the graphs look like on those is they're just flat while oil's going up and then they drop when oil drops and then they're flat when oil's going up. Uh, and they're just really bad graphs. And I know a lot of people are really interested in those and they're trying to go long on those, but just holding them long term long uh, is ugly. And with the levered one like UCO, uh, the high volatility is super ugly too because you lose you lose money on every volatile swing um, because of the compounding math and the levered fund. So uh, that's that's overboard for Amazon. Just uh, I know a lot of people are really worried about their stocks or don't know what to buy, and people are jumping into oil and they have no idea how the oil contracts work or the businesses work. Like if you're buying a fracking company or a midstream company or like an oil production company, how that actually relates to the price of oil and the tanker companies relative to the huge oversupply, that's pretty complicated. Um, so I've been doing a lot of oil videos trying to go over that whole industry and the different sectors and who's doing well and who's not. And for the most part, like the whole world is doing poorly with the oil situation. Oil prices have crashed, that's killing everybody like Russia and Saudi Arabia are in the best position to do like well longer term out of that, but it's just hurting everybody right now, except for the oil tankers who have this huge oversupply of cheap oil and uh, they didn't have enough business and now they have too much business. So those, those are the companies that look good, I guess, basically for the oil, uh, how to go long on oil is pretty much go long oil tankers right now. And, uh, and for these top fives, you know, like Tesla and Amazon did a big jump and, you know, the bigger ones like Microsoft and that sort of thing. Like those are good companies uh, for the most part, have good balance sheets. Tesla, not so much. Amazon looks worse than Tesla's balance sheet right now. Uh, but like, you know, Microsoft and Apple have really good balance sheets. And so these are really good companies, but this is not a good cycle. And it's really difficult to trade these. And it's a position where I absolutely don't want any exposure to going along on anything. Just because, and it's not, it's not uh not that the they won't go up, and they definitely could. I've done like a video on the um sort of just the probabilities and what's that word for uh, a high probability move, I forget. Um but just basically the upside is like like a 10% chance of a of a small gradual increase and the downside is like a 90% chance of a bigger move down or something like that and the rest of this cycle for like another month and it's just uh it's just very very risky to hold longs right now and uh, this consolidation that we're getting is maybe shifting the percentages to a shorter downside and maybe 50 50 kind of sideways down area as a general uh as a general guess where we're going to go in the short term like over the next couple of weeks but but basically i think all of these 
these big stocks that everybody loves are a small probability of going up a little and a high probability of going down a lot uh, just right now. So that's kind of the look on Amazon. And uh, yeah, I don't trust this. I don't trust this this kind of thing to happen again. This isn't like a smooth like uh, move that looks reliable. Uh, and, and another kind of jump in this cycle. So, yeah, I'm 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 looking at oil oil tankers and gold and like treasuries and cash and kind of things like that for longs through this cycle. Maybe healthcare. Those are the only things that are really hanging on and, and going up at any reasonable rate in this cycle. And uh, be safe out there and please hit the like button to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Happy trading.